Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Winston Kim. Thank you very much for attending this evening. So I'm a hip and knee surgeon, and it's my pleasure to speak to you this evening about knee arthritis and uh, robot-assisted uh, knee replacement. I have performed large numbers of joint replacements using the Mako robot-assisted technology that I'm going to refer to in this presentation. Uh, I'd like to give you an outline of what I'm going to speak about this evening. I'm going to give you a simple definition of what knee arthritis is. I'm going to help you to decide if you have symptoms, what's best for you in managing your symptoms. Very briefly talk about the various non-operative uh, treatment options available to you. And if you need a knee replacement, what is MAKO robot assisted knee replacement and why one considers that and go through some of the outcomes related with uh, robot assisted knee replacement and partial knee replacements. So very simply, knee arthritis is defined as loss of cartilage. This is the loss of hard cartilage. And this is the hard cartilage that lines the bottom end of your thigh bone and the top end of your shin bone. So very simply, arthritis is defined by thinning or loss of this cartilage. And it can be mild, it can be minor thinning of this hard cartilage right down to complete loss of the cartilage. And this loss of this hard cartilage is what defines osteoarthritis. So it's a spectrum of disease, meaning you can have very minor uh, symptoms from minor thinning of the hard cartilage right down to complete bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis. And the progression of knee osteoarthritis is a complex interplay of various factors from genetics or constitutional predisposition to it, uh, previous trauma, uh, and the aging process. So somebody who has knee osteoarthritis typically will present with a combination of the symptoms. So they have an aching discomfort, they have activity-related pain, they often have stiffness or heaviness around their knee joint with or without swelling, but their symptoms affect their ability to function well. So their walking distance is affected as is their mobility. It's important to note that when you decide on what to do, that treatment should be tailored to the individual patient because every patient experiences arthritis very differently. So you have very sedentary patients who are prepared to accept a uh, sedentary lifestyle and therefore may not uh, want more interventional treatment right down to somebody who has high expectations because they're far more mobile or far more active than the next person. So there's a menu of choices that it's key that you understand what those options are for you and for you to make a decision based on your understanding of what these options are. So it helps to have expert assessment and expert assessment can be by your physiotherapist, doctor or surgeon. And what your doctor or surgeon or physiotherapist will do is to take a history and understand what your symptoms are and give you options based on an understanding of what your particular requirements are. So part of this assessment is your doctor or physio or surgeon obtaining an x-ray of the knee joint. So you will see is an x-ray of a normal knee. So what that is, you can see a big gap between the thigh and the shin bone, and that's because hard cartilage is invisible. So this is a normal knee, as opposed to the x-ray on your right, which shows bone-on-bone -bone changes. So you might have heard uh, friends or colleagues refer to bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. This is the most severe form of arthritis, where you have complete loss of cartilage that caps the thigh and the shin bone. And this helps in the decision-making in relation to what one should consider. Because somebody who has an x-ray that appears like what you see on your left is more likely to benefit perhaps from a period of non-operative conservative treatment, whereas somebody who has severe bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis is not likely to benefit as much and would possibly require joint replacement, for example, depending on your requirements and expectations. It's always helpful to start with non-operative treatments. So somebody um, who has osteoarthritis would typically benefit from non-impact exercises such as use of an exercise bike. And this is because non-impact activities are often not as symptomatic as weight bearing and it helps reduce stiffness or heaviness around the joint. It helps improve your general fitness and helps with weight loss potentially. A simple uh, strengthening exercises, exercise is that of a sit to stand. This is simple. You don't need a gym membership to, to do this exercise. You can incorporate this with your day-to-day -day life. Sit to stand essentially is a squat. So as you, as you sit back down from a standing position, 
It is a squat and it's a simple thing to do over a period of time that strengthens the, the muscles in your thigh and that helps support the knee and helps reduce pain because it supports the, the load bearing through your knee. This is probably the hardest non-operative uh, treatment modality, uh, weight loss, but a lot of research has shown that even a modest amount of weight loss can significantly improve symptoms. Knee injections are useful tools in patients with arthritis because it helps you buy time. So the way that steroid injections work is to reduce inflammation and irritation about the joint. And similarly, blood injections, what is referred to as platelet-rich plasma injections, can help reduce symptoms by reducing inflammation around the joint. The most recent research would support the use of a combination of blood injections and synthetic lubricants, so what is referred to as hyaluronic acid injection. So the combination of that can be helpful in early management of knee osteoarthritis. In somebody who has advanced arthritis, so coming back to this imaging of somebody who's got bone and bone osteoarthritis, it's not unsurprising that if simple non-operative treatments and time does not work, that these patients may benefit from knee replacement. And we know knee and hip replacements work. You know, over about 100,000 joint replacements, knee and hip replacements are performed every year in England and Wales. And the way that knee replacements are performed very simply is that bone is shaved off from the bit that's worn in the thigh bone and the shin bone side. And essentially, you put a cap and a plate on uh, in, in the knee, and, and it works. But the problem is, it is not minor surgery knee replacement is a major operation and compared to hip replacement, it is associated with a much longer recovery and patients are not as satisfied after a knee replacement compared to a hip replacement. So the commonly quoted dissatisfaction rate after a knee replacement is in the order of 20%. And this 20% dissatisfaction rate after a knee replacement has been a major driver behind a lot of the research to try to improve outcomes. So is it is poor outcome due to poor design, poor materials, poor rehab, poor function of the knee? And we are beginning to understand the factors behind uh, poor outcomes after a knee replacement. And it's also important that to note that patients' expectations are increasing. There's a demand for a knee that not just is pain-free, but feels normal. A knee replacement is a highly technical operation and it's so easy to get it wrong and it's hard to be consistent as a surgeon. But equally, we understand that if you position the knee replacement accurately and precisely, you will get a good outcome from a technical perspective and that translates into better uh, pain relief, better function, better quality of life and it increases the potential for a joint that feels normal. Robot knee replacement uh, surgery is the culmination of a lot of research that looked into the various factors of what will improve outcomes. We know that if you position your knee implants accurately, that translates into better functional uh, outcomes after knee replacement. So the technology combines CT imaging. This is essentially multiple x-rays with 3D technology, and it allows surgeons to construct or devise a plan that is individualized to the individual patient. So we can work out your anatomy and we know the ideal position for your knee replacement even before surgery, as opposed to the conventional way essentially where you look at x-rays and you go into surgery and you make all the decisions about how to position your implant during surgery. So we have a personalized sur uh, surgical plan and the big advance in terms of robot-assisted knee replacement is that we are able, with this technology, to execute that plan accurately and precisely. How does it work? As you've heard uh, earlier, so sen sensors are placed around the joint and this allows the surgeon to detect the joint in three dimensions and bone cuts are precise and accurate to fractions of a millimeter. What we know with uh, robot-assisted technology is that it is much more precise, much more accurate than conventional surgery. And early st studies have shown improved pain, improved satisfaction at a year compared to uh, pre-surgery. This is the study that compared conventional versus robot-assisted uh, knee replacement. And it's been shown that there is less pain, less requirement for pain medication, 
less blood loss, reduced length of hospital stay with better range of movement compared to conventional knee replacement. And when comparing both conventional versus manual knee replacement, satisfaction levels are better. So this study looked at a group of 75 consecutive patients who underwent robot assisted surgery versus conventional surgery and demonstrated that at year 95%, 95% of patients are very satisfied versus 75% of patients in the manual or conventional group uh, following knee replacement surgery. This is uh, an ongoing study. This is a robust, uh, quite a robust study, which is uh, a randomized study that compared conventional versus robot surgery. This is still ongoing in the early stages of the study. 50 uh, patients so far have been randomized into a manual arm that had um, conventional manual knee replacement versus, com uh, versus 50 in the robot assisted group. And at six months, there was no functional difference. It's early days, but it has demonstrated that the robot arm, the robot group of patients are more likely to have improvement in pain in two and six months versus manual surgery and, um, and a higher satisfaction rate compared to conventional surgery. So there are lots more to come from this, but this is at, uh, at the early stages of this uh, randomized control study. So in short, it is about better planning before uh, surgery that allows the surgeon to understand where the perfect position is for your implant uh, before surgery and the ability to execute that plan precisely and accurately that sets it apart from the conventional way of doing uh, knee replacement and it is associated with better outcomes and another big uh, area of improvement that robotics has allowed us is the ability to choose less invasive surgery by that, I mean the option of partial rather than full knee replacement. We know that partial knee replacements are less major operations compared to full or total knee replacement. It is a safer operation. There's reduced blood loss, quicker re recovery, uh, faster rehabilitation, and improved or similar satisfaction levels compared to total knee replacement. So why isn't partial knee replacement done as much as total knee replacement? And the answer to that is that there are a lot of early failures associated with the way that is done in the conventional way of doing partial knee replacements. And that has put a lot of surgeons off doing partial knee replacements. Although up to about 40% of, pati 40 of patients who have knee uh, arthritis can do with a partial rather than a full knee replacement. So what robotic technology, robotics has allowed us is the confidence to perform partial knee replacements. And this is a big advance compared to conventional means. Early studies have shown that with partial robot-assisted knee replacement, that there's less pain compared to manually performed partial knee replacements. It is far more accurate compared to conventional partial knee replacements. Nine out of 10 patients are able to walk without a walking aid three weeks after surgery. And in patients who work, 85% of patients are able to return to work six weeks after surgery. So the question is, in a patient with osteoarthritis, what should I do with the arthritic pain that I have amongst the various options that are available to me? And the key is education. So understanding what options are available to you and having that menu of options discussed with you and tailored to you as an individual patient. So understanding the non-operative options and when to consider surgery, depending on your specific requirements, your specific expectations of what your knee should achieve for you. Uh, in my experience uh, and what's reported in the literature, robot assisted knee replacement is about better uh, precision and accuracy, a tailor-made plan for the patient and the potential for a less invasive procedure. And that's what has revolutionized practice amongst knee surgeons who perform both knee replacement, but also want to perform partial knee replacements, but up to now, perhaps are not as confident about doing partial knee replacements because they are fearful that an imperfect, imperfectly positioned partial knee replacement may fail early. So this technology gives us that confidence to do so. So my experience so far is more than 950, albeit hip, knee, and partial knee replacements, 
against a background of more than 2,000 uh, hip and knee replacements. So when you've done more than 2,000 hip and knee replacements through the conventional way, you would think, right, you know, surely I can do a hip or knee replacement. But my experience and the experience of a lot of surgeons that use or have adopted robotics technology is that it actually improves us. It gives us that much more accuracy and precision, and we see it translated in our practice to quicker recovery, uh, less pain for the patient, but more importantly, the potential for a joint that feels normal. And that's what we're seeing in, in our practice. Because it does so by giving us confidence in terms of planning and also the execution of the technical procedure. Uh, but this is under constant evaluation. In summary, I would say every patient's expectation and, and experience of knee arthritis is different. We all have different requirements, different expectations. And it's key that you understand what is arthritis, what are the options available to you, uh, assessed by, uh, by colleagues, physio, doctors or surgeons that will allow you to go through these different options and allow you to make a decision based on your specific requirements. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.